Okay, so welcome to the Martial Art Business Growth Network uh, podcast. My name is Rick Dubidat. I'm the owner and founder and uh, head coach of the Martial Art Business Growth Network. I'm here with my good friend and coaching client, uh, Dan Davis, and um, I'm excited today to just uh, get a little bit of insight into, into him, find out a little bit more about him, uh, about his journey, his martial arts school, and, uh, and everything, because he's, he's doing some amazing things, and uh, recently went to his his school for a site visit after doing coaching for a while and I was, I was blown away. So, um, so Dan, how are things mate? Are you okay? Not bad. Not bad. What about yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Apart from this messed up eye, just in case everybody wonders why I look like Quasimodo. You better tell. <laughs> just say someone punched you. Oh, that's kind of what happened. Right. So, um, so let everybody know, uh, for those that don't know you, who are you and what do you do in the martial arts? So my name is Danielle Davis. I run a full-time centre over in Radford and we've currently been at this location for two and a half years. We teach Shotokan Karate, two different styles of Shotokan Karate. Um, and yeah, loving it. Awesome. Good, good, good. So what got you into the martial arts in the first place? My father. So my father dragged me down to this um, skittle alley at the back of a pub when I was eight years old and they used to teach judo. So I did judo for a while. Pretty cool. That's the first art that I actually touched apart from boxing before that when I was 10. So that, that's interesting. Um, did you, and it was judo that you started in? Judo that started off this, um, this martial art craze. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing, man. It's a, it's an amazing art, isn't it? I didn't do it for long. It was all right. I'm glad I've fell into karate more more than judo. I wasn't too keen. I just went because my parents sort of said, you've got to go. <laughs> so it wasn't a very own free choice, but I'm happy that I stuck with martial arts and actually found the martial arts that suited me. Yeah, I think that's important. And it's probably the same with myself. Um, I was lucky enough to train with Denzel White, who was an Olympic um, uh, judo uh, coach. Um, but yeah. I threw a tantrum because I wanted to go to a competition. My parents wouldn't let me. And that was the end of my judo career. <laughs> so, um, so you've got an amazing facility, like I said. Um, yes. It's a really, really nice facility. Um, talk to us a little about your experience opening that location and any other locations that you had before. Um, and maybe about a little bit about what the journey was like in the beginning of opening up. It's never easy opening up a martial arts school in the beginning. No. Not at all. So quick run through it. I was working full time in primary education. Yeah. Um, I helped out in a local, local community centre running a summer school. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, for their PE curriculum, I used martial arts. Yeah. Um, taught it for free at my primary school as an after school club as well. Um, and then from there, a lot of the parents kept saying, where's your club? Where's your club? We want to send the children. At that point, didn't have one. Yeah. So I started up a Sunday class, one class a week on a Sunday morning um, at my local community centre. That expanded to four or five. Then I started using school halls and other community centres. By the time that I finished, I had quite a few classes running in the week. Awesome. Um, sat down with a mate and I turned around and said to him, you know what, the dream would be if I could have my own place. So we started working on it. Never really did a proper plan in writing. It was always in my head. Yeah. So we opened up our first place. It was the first time that I went into business properly. Um, spent quite a bit of my personal money on it, as you do, making it all nice and fancy. Mm -hmm. Short of it, we lost it during the first lockdown. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of issues with regards to the building. I was making it look pretty, but it actually wasn't pretty at all. There was issues with the roof, etc. Yeah. Um, we were luckily lucky enough to be able to gain access to the ten thousand um, pound COVID grant. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what it was called. Mm -hmm. So then we opened up a in another location, another full time facility. Um, pretty small, but this time it had double glazed windows. It had gas central heating. It had a car park. So you know what? Sound. Let's go for it. Oh, okay. We did it. That was the ground floor. Mm -hmm. um, 12, just under 12 months later, the floor above became available, which was twice the size. Uh -huh. This floor, I, have, I, had my, I had my eyes on six years ago. Uh -huh. And I always, after viewing it, 
it was way out of our league then, Rick. Honestly, we, we were like, we'll never be able to afford the rent. We'll never be able to do this, that, and other. But you know what? One day, if I can get that floor, mm-hmm. I know I've made it. I know that I've secured my um, my career. It's wicked. So the floor came available and didn't really look at the full terms and conditions. I just went, here's your deposit, mate. I want the keys. Let's go. Man. Took it on. And yeah, been smashing it ever since. Wicked, man. It's really, really good. It's, it's a lovely location. It really, really is. Um, so like we've been working together for, for how long now? Probably about, about a year? Over Not a year. even that long. I, I think it's six months. Okay, yeah, things is it long? It's long. Yeah. I had you menu in April and you oh, came about yeah. just just as I was starting to recover. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. yeah, I remember. So tell us anyone, tell everybody about, about that journey, about like um how it came about and the conversations that we had and stuff and your thoughts and Okay. Um so short of it in April I came down with pneumonia. It struck me for about two months. At one point, we thought, my wife thought that I was a goner. I wasn't going to pull through. It was a pretty scary time. Things started to get better. Um, And then, obviously, I was off for two and a half months, and it was like, okay, I need to look at my business now. And my business wasn't in a great place. I wasn't in a great place mentally. And I just had, um, what do you call it? Everyone goes through it. at some stage. Well, what's the, what, what's the word called, Rick? No, in denial or? No, where you, you, you just, you're just broken. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. Let's just use that word. Just like, you yeah, know. I was broken mm-hmm. um, in a really bad place mentally. My health still wasn't great. It was a long road to recovery. So I started looking on Facebook, started looking for a bit of guidance, reached out to a couple of people that I um, know. And then, I, I, yeah, I just kept on searching. And then I reached out to um, Simone, mm-hmm. started talking to Simone. Um, and then Simone um, guided me towards you. I think we spoke on the phone and um, I sat and thought about it for a while. Yeah. And then I spoke to you again. I think it was after you called me out of the blue. And then you was quite frank with me. And it went along the lines of, you're not going to be able to get your business sorted out unless we can sort you out your your sort out your mental state. So I joined you yeah. for two months. We focused just on myself yeah. and my mental state, mm-hmm. um, and then we oh, started looking at the business. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, we've only been actually looking at the business for three and a half, four months in total. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's call it your your thing that you do. You know that 90-day thing yeah. where you say that you can help um, other business owners bring in additional extra income, a £1,000 a month. Yeah. We've doubled that. Yeah, that's that's tried quite conservative when we put that out. It, it's, um, it's that thing, isn't it? People don't really believe it, um, that we can do it until they start working with us and then they realise because... It's that thing where, and it's a battle that we have, if I'm honest, where there's scepticism around coaching in general or having a coach. Um, And I think everybody thinks that coaches are out to rip you off or anything, but we're not. (laughs) Well, good coaches aren't. We want to get results because if we don't get half these results, then it's not good for us either. Plus the reason why, for me, I can only talk for myself and the other two coaches that work with me. the reason why we do it is because we we love helping people. So, you know, I mean, just like the martial arts, the reason why I love teaching martial arts is not because I want to create fighters and stuff. I've gone through that stage. It's because of the difference I see that it makes in people. So, um, yeah, I appreciate that. And I appreciate the hard work you've put in. You're smashing targets at the moment, man. It's really, really good. Um, the thing is, I know for a fact, I've been, I mean, you've got all the material there and I'll be the first one to put my hand up. I've not accessed everything yet. I've barely scratched the surface, and I know for a fact that there, there's more. There's more things to come. Already, we've doubled um, our additional income, which is amazing. You've helped me set targets, um, targets that weren't due to be smashed until December. And these targets, you bullied me over because at first you was like, "The targets aren't big enough, mate. Yeah, they're too easy. 
do it again. <laughs> so I did it again. I think I did that two or three times <laughs> until we got to the point where we were, I was petrified and you was happy with the targets that I set. And um, because we've been so focused and the weekly phone calls, um, et cetera, the masterminds, the top, all three, two, of the t two out of three targets are already smashed. And I'm getting really close to the last one, which is the one that scared me the most. Well, you'll hit that easily. You really, really will. That's good. It's really, really good to hear. So, like, when, what are your initial thoughts about the growth network, like the coaching program, when you first came on board? Because I know it takes people a little bit of time to get the momentum in anything because it's breaking routine and setting time aside each week to turn up for the calls and the trainings and do the work and apply it into the business. Um, so, what were your initial thoughts? Especially because I'll, I can be quite blunt. <laughs> There's two ways I can explain. So the first one, what I liked is that you you wasn't focused on my business to start off with. You was focused on me as an individual, me as a person, to get my mind in the correct place. Because as you said, you can't work on your business if you're not well yourself. Yeah. You, your business just doesn't work like that. No business does. Now, the only way that I can describe it is that since, obviously, getting in the right place to start work, working on the business again. It's like starting martial arts all over again. I'm getting battered left, right, and center, and that's by you. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> um, but I'm learning at each point. You're direct, just as my old instructor was. Didn't beat around the bush. Yeah. And if I've not got my stuff sorted, the question is why? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? That's what we all need. That's what I need. I know my mentors do the same to me. They Yeah. And me, me being me, I will always say, oh, oh, yeah, I've got this to do. I've got this to do. I've got this to do. You, you can see through the bullshit. Excuse my French. Um, and yet you just point blank. And that's what I need. And I've seen you working with other, um, some of your other clients. Yeah. One of the things that I like about you is that you treat everyone as an individual. You don't treat everybody as the same. So you know what it is that I need and how to hit my targets, take my business to the next level. But then there are other people that have got different needs and you you portray yourself differently. You teach them a different way. It's not always one set way of doing things. Uh, that, that is important. It's, um, I think that's the, the reason. The, when we first start working together or when I work with anybody else, um, it, there is a phase of me getting to know them, understanding them. Otherwise, it can be overwhelming because one thing that we don't talk about, I feel, enough as an industry is how hard it is to run a, a business, regardless of whether it's a martial art business or what, because the second that you take any revenue generating um, activity and you add other human beings into the, the equation, that's when it starts messing things up, starts throwing these curveballs in. And if you're not prepared, then it's a, it's an emotional roller coaster. I don't know, because I've, I've been there, you know what I mean? It's like I've had the, like, loads and loads of students, I've had the, loads and loads of stuff. I've had too many staff. I've had not enough staff, but too many instructors, not enough structures. I've had too many students, not enough. I've literally been on every single um, run of the, the scale, so to speak. Um, and I love the journey. I really do love the journey and I love learning and growing. That's the exciting part for me. Um, and looking at other people and, and knowing where they are on that journey and what they need to move forward based on their needs is um i think it's key to getting the results it really is it's yeah it's that's why with the masterminds they run the same the way that I, I do them i don't do the whole one person has a question and then they have a problem and they they, they get they get attention for like 20 30 minutes while everybody else sits there twiddling their thumbs I can't work like that that's very very old school and that's not a a group learning environment but um Enough about the program, more about, the, about you. So what was one of the, so one of the first things you started working on was your mindset. Um, what results did you feel that you got from, from that first initial um, couple of months worth of, of work? What Getting if out of my own way. Once I got out of my own way yeah. and I started making things simpler, so much more easier, man. Honestly, I would have to spend hours at the laptop doing doing stuff that I thought I had to do, and I didn't have to do it. And it's just because I bought in so, oh, I'll bring this system in because this system is going to help with that. Oh, there's a new system. Oh, yeah, let's bring that system in. And none of the systems were talking with each other. There was too much going on. 
And I was just wasting my time. Yeah. And now, I mean, even now, we're still looking at what we can simplify. And I'm loving it. It's cool, isn't it? It's so much easier. And it, it, our onboarding process, I thought I had that down to a T. I thought that was amazing. I was so happy to sit there and tell you all about it. And then, boom, you give me a black eye. And it's like, no. <laughs> what the hell are you making your journey for your customers far too difficult? Yeah. So then we looked at it again, and now it's just a simple, easy process. But I'm not going to mention too much on here because you know what? I, I don't believe in giving too much away. <laughs> you give away enough as it is. People want to know about these simple, simple systems. They need to get in contact with you because, honestly, it's taken probably 35% of the pressure off me and my team by having simple, easy processes. And I do believe that the influx of students that we've got coming in now with the parents, I believe that it, it – they're settling better, they're staying longer because the systems aren't overcomplicated and it's easier for them as well. It's not just easy for me, it's easy for my students, it's also easy for my team, it's easy for my parents. Brilliant. I, mean, like, I remember that customer journey when we went through that. So you came down to the Growth Network head offices, didn't you, in in, um, in Birmingham, Mailbox, which is the nice offices, to be fair, it's a very nice environment. So what were your thoughts about coming down? Well, to let everybody know, it's basically what we do with the clients if... Um, if there's something that we need to look at, it needs a little bit more face-to-face -face attention. What we do, we'll do a, either a site visit where we go out to the school and sit down and spend time, or if it's more beneficial, the client will come to us and sit down with us for um, a morning. Um, it's included in in, your, in the membership and stuff. And then we'll literally just take the time to go through everything that's done, the who does it, when does when is it done, what are the steps? Why is that done that way? And then we just simplify the whole process to make it more cost effective, simpler to do and simpler to replicate. But what were your thoughts of coming down? Because that could be nerve wracking when I have anyone down. It's like, whoa, this is like crazy. Uh, it was nerve wracking. I got there, I parked up and I called you as I parked up. And then I went, um, I went in, up into the foyer to go and sit down. And I've, I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> it made me more nervous, in all honesty. <laughs> I've not been in that environment before. I mean, we've got shopping malls, all that kind of stuff, but this was like next level. This is like where only VIPs go. <laughs> it is nice. The place is very, very nice. But he sets up that level of professionalism for everything we do, and it's the benchmark, because we have our culture statements and everything. And we have to do everything at a certain level to adhere to everything else. Otherwise, one part of it lets everything else down. So the That's environment has to reflect the branding, and branding has to reflect the et cetera, et cetera. And that, that was like next level. That's cool. 100% next level. So we've got the mastermind there as, as well, the next one. That's going to be really, really cool. So that's going to be really cool. Yeah, cool. So um, on the actual day when you were being not interrogated, I won't use that word because that's the word you'd use, um, when you were... I did through the, the process and stuff. What happened? Did you have any eureka moments? Did it make you think? Did it help? There were that many eureka moments that when I left, I had a headache and I needed time to process it all. Yeah, it, it, it's a long-term plan. It is, it is a long-term plan. And it's, chip, it's chipping away at things bit by bit. What's the most urgent thing? What can be done now? Who else can get it done for you? Uh, yeah. Have we already got the resource that we can already just give you and plug and play, which will just make it easier because it's about getting results, um, not just slogging through everything. So it's good. Has it made, um, well, what does those changes, those changes there, what difference do you think those changes are going to make to the future of your, your business? Masses, absolute masses amount. So like I said, it's just the whole the whole feel, the whole way we run things is just a smoother, simpler operation. Definitely. I was always in the mindset of I've got to spend a load of money to make a load of money. One of the things that you're currently working on with me now is that the business works for me. I don't work for the business. So true. So, so true. You simplify it and then um, you need to capitalize on the, the business as much as the business needs to capitalize it itself. I see school owners like generating profit and then putting the profit um, back into things that they don't need within the business, neglect, yeah. neglecting the things that they need to actually get done within the business, which has a knock on effect. 
And they do this over a long period of time. And then they start resenting the business after a few years of doing this because they get nothing out themselves, emotionally, physically, um, or financially. They need Which is the same area. That, that's exactly where I was back in uh, June. Yeah. I, as I said to you, I was resenting it. I was even thinking about going back and working nine to five, um, back in education again, because I just was not in the right place at all. And yeah, you've hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Do you think that people in our industry sometimes get influenced by what they see on social media with other school owners and do things that they don't, either don't need to do or shouldn't be doing yet because they are not at the same stage on their journey as whoever they've seen? Correct. A hundred percent. They take too many steps mm. without getting the fundamentals in place like having a decent CRM system that will work for you. Yeah. They will do whatever they, what, yeah, they, they'll get whatever they think is in place, uh -huh. try and get that to run and then go 20 steps ahead to do other stuff that they don't need, that they either they don't need or they shouldn't be focusing on. Yeah. But look at the conversation we had yesterday. Yeah. I was in a position where I was going to spend a load of money on the academy on something that one, I don't need something two that I shouldn't be focusing on. And after your after you beat me up last night, <laughs> I realized, you know what? I'm that money's going elsewhere. You're right. The, the business needs to be making me money, not me putting money into the business. Now, let's get this, get this clear. It's like you, we always should invest, invest in the business on the things that matter. What we're talking yes. about here is investing in things that, that don't matter. So it's, it's like when I see um, schools putting out that they've, they've just ordered, I don't know, 50 century punch bags from abroad or, you know what I mean, or just done some new decor and stuff. Um, for the schools that can afford it and are ahead, excellent. That's cool. Do that stuff at the right time. But there's some places that are doing it and I'm like, wow, you're doing that, but you haven't even sorted your marketing. Congrats. Congrats. <laughs> So what or their front of houses are complete and utter states, or yeah. their car parks an absolute mess, yeah. and it's the first impressions that count, not what's in, not what you've got upstairs or staff, or downstairs. staff development. Like investing in staff development, so your team are giving a better level of customer service, which will turn improve improve your um, your deliverables and your retention, which in turn will bring in even more revenue. It's 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 a crazy one, but cool. But how do you feel about your business when you walk into your business now? How do you feel about it, and how is it different to how you felt before we started? So, shall we go into the play centre side? It's completely up to you, buddy. So, when you came to visit, I was running two businesses. So, on the ground floor, I had a full-on calf yeah. with a baby and toddler play centre that was being run by a team that I put into place, but obviously I still oversaw it as a director mm -hmm. and I had the martial arts upstairs. Everyone was all singing and dancing. You're walking and I I'm happy to say it was pretty amazing. Yeah. It felt amazing when you walked in as well with the way that everything was designed. But then came August. A lot of things were going on. Um, as you know, with staffing and stuff and we downsized on our staffing, thanks to you. Um, and then there was a couple of holidays that I had to cover. So then obviously my focus shifted from the martial arts to the play center. And this was happening a lot of times. So when there was an issue, my focus had to shift from martial arts to the play center. And, and I started to notice a pattern, especially financial pattern as well. And with our retention that whenever I dropped the ball on the martial arts, focus on the play center, boom, the play center was doing amazing. Martial arts, nosedive. Yeah. Even though I have got an amazing team in place on both levels, it still took a nosedive. So then I came away from the play centre, started working on the martial arts again. Martial arts started to slowly creep back up. Play centre drops. And I, and I couldn't manage both businesses so they're equaled out. It yeah. was always one or the other. And you, you never told me about dropping the play centre. You didn't mention anything about it. You helped me out a few times because I had questions about it. And then one day I just woke up and it's like, what would it be like if I didn't have the stress and the worry of this play centre? What, how would it make me feel? How would it sit financially? What would I save? What am I spending? 
sat there, looked at it, shot you over a load of stats. Mm -hmm. And then you was like, so what are you going to do, Daniel? What are you going to do about it? What's your action plan? All right, I'll set three goals by Christmas. I'm going to do ABC. One play center is now sold. It's gone. That's going to be converted into our second dojo. So we can split off our uh, different programs instead of having them all in the hall at the same time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, how did I get onto that question? Just basically, how did you feel about the business now compared to That's it. Um, before? Keep talking. Somebody's at my door. Keep going. <laughs> all on my own. I'm running the show now. Hey, hey. Um, so yeah, I walk in now and it feels amazing. One reason why is because when it was the play centre, um, I was having to come in for nine o'clock, half past eight. Since I quit school, the nine to five job, one of the things I promised myself is I will have a couple of um, late mornings where I don't have to get up first thing in the morning. Now I'm rocking up 11, half 11. My team's already in, they're working. And I don't feel like there's a massive weight on my shoulders anymore. I can feel that I can breathe. Yeah, well, that's good. And it makes a massive difference. I mean, having that energy and getting that energy back um, within your business is going to make again have a knock on effect your till team will feel the energy i've been yes. there where i've been burnt out because i'm doing too many things at once and i'm complicating life um and the thing is whilst i was forging forward and just getting shit done and that um my team felt the pressure even just me being there that's it because you're always on your team bang 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 Mm, exactly and it's not healthy it's not healthy for, for us as business owners it's not healthy for the team because they're always kind of kind of guess where our mood is at or where our head is at or scared to make mistakes and stuff and we've been there like years ago and now it's um it's good to see you you've completely transformed from when we first started working together completely the team has changed um you've got control of the team you know what they're doing you know what they're targeting you know what their kpis are they've got a clear vision very very clear vision i mean like this morning you're doing like training um with them um and that wasn't happening on a regular basis before we started working together no it um, wasn't i'll just literally go i'll walk in he'll go have you got this done yeah okay right now do that and there would be no i wouldn't give him anything else because there was always something else that i had to get sorted and the list was never ending so i'll be coming in at nine o'clock i won't be leaving until nine ten o'clock at night and he'd be like, I ain't got time to speak to my staff. I've got to get this, 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 and this done. Yeah. You've got to yeah, simplify to multi flop, multiply is the uh is the phrase. That's good. It's really, really good to see. And it's it's good to be part of the journey, so I'm grateful. Um, so what does the future hold for for you and uh and the business? You don't have to go into too much detail if you don't want to, but once I've got all the systems, simple systems in place here. Once I've gone through all your materials, so all of your guides, and literally I can, they're in there, the process is going through, my staff know them, my staff understand them. And then the, the ultimate plan is that I, I want to come away for three, four months. I want to go abroad. I want to go and enjoy myself. Yeah. Come back. If all those systems, those simple systems that me and you have put together in place are working, in the, the and I know for a fact the business is... What's the word called? Not secure, but... Stable. Stable, that's it. And I know for a fact that I can't fit any more students in. I know for a fact that we're hitting our limits on everything possible. Then it'll be time to open up the second place, but not until this place is absolutely jam-packed and it's stable. That's good. The next stage for us is setting the, the financial target. We'll look at that next year. So because, <clears throat> excuse me, um, yes, we need more members in our businesses, but it's more about the financial profitability. Yes. That's where my focus lies. So um, that's where we'll be focusing in the, in the new year, 100%. So you, you probably, by the end of next year or halfway through next year, you'll, you'll probably realize that you don't need to maximize or ram the place out to hit the targets that you need for personally and for for, for the, the location. Um, and it actually, there's a tipping point, I feel, for each business. You get past a certain number of students and then the quality starts to change and the customer service, which is the communication and stuff, that starts to dip. So this right. is where it's about looking at where that tipping point is um, 
and get into there. Then anything above that is a bonus as long as you don't go too far. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited about your journey because your your facility is amazing. It really, really is. I'd love to have that location, like lift it up and just transport it to into the West Midlands. And just, <laughs> yeah, you can't have it, mate. It's mine. <laughs> I will fight you for it. It's a really nice place. You've done really, really well with it. Um, Cheers, but I appreciate that. That's no worries. So, uh, what would you say to other martial arts school owners that know deep down that they need help, but they're holding themselves back? And they're telling themselves that they can't afford it or or they'll they'll figure it out themselves or they're they're doing the usual get a little bit of a oh somebody's offered something for free let me just grab that little bit there and work out the rest and this there and jump on a a free um uh live on it what would you say to those those people that have been doing that and using that as their lifeline to to scale their business in life shall i do it the rick way where it's just straight to the point <laughs> no, whichever way you want man i can't I've got, I could only take ownership for, for me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first one, get out of your own way because it's not about you. It's about your business. Mm -hmm. Second one, you like to invest in your business, but you don't invest in your um, management training, etc. You will invest, you'll happily invest in your martial arts skills to become an instructor, but you're not actually investing in business itself. You can't become a business person overnight. Yeah, so true. So it's a, it's a curriculum that we have to learn over time and get better at. Um, and that's what the Growth Network is all about. So Dan, as usual, uh, a pleasure talking to you, my friend. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon. I'll see you at the weekend, anyway, one mate. Sunday. Yeah. Um, well done on your achievements so far. And we've only just started. We really have only just started. Um, a value Maybe scratch the surface, mate. Yeah, man, a valued member of the Growth Network. And by the way, what you said about going through all the, getting through all the guides, that ain't going to happen because we've got a list of, hold on, <laughs> 70, <laughs> 72 extras that are going to be um, <laughs> added over the, the short little little bits, but the things that have come up over the year, improvements and tweaks. But um, when I say it's going to cover everything that you need for your business, I mean that you'll be able to just put your staff, put your staff in, in the right direction towards it. So that's good. You know what? One last thing to add, because as you know, I've had um, different types of coaches in the past. Oh. One of the big differences with you as well is, is that you don't just verbalize everything. You've actually got the material there ready to download so you can work on. So you're not having to sit there, write down all the notes, remember everything afterwards. You get home. And because you've drove past something that's caught your attention, you've completely forgotten what it is that you're actually supposed to be doing. Your guides are there. Everything's listed in a step-by-step -step process. You need to get this done before you move on to this. There's no point in going from one to five because you're going to miss out three and four. Yeah. You've systemized it where it's easy for someone that's, that learns in different ways. Me personally, I need the material there and someone going in the back of my head going, da -da 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 -da, get this done. Yeah. I, I can't I can't just sit there and listen to someone talking for, for an hour, half an hour, going, you need to get this, 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 this done. This is how you're going to do it or how you're going to do it. Because I would get distracted. Even by the time I've turned off the laptop, I'll get distracted. Yeah. Well, I remember a staff walks in and goes, yeah, I need some one pencils. And I'm like, but I've got to get this done first. Oh, I've got a customer waiting downstairs. And I'm like, with your process that you put into place in these guides, literally print them off and it's there. You can always go back to them. So yeah, well done on that. It's easy, simple processes. Thank you. I believe in frameworks. I think, I don't think the industry is as complicated as we think running a business. It's not easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. I'm all about simplicity. That's the only way I can run three bloody businesses the way that I do. It's because I need everything just simple. Which is why we've got a set of frameworks for literally everything. So it's uh, understand, watch videos, um, do the worksheets and the booklets. Come to the um, the training sessions on the Sunday evening. Uh, Monday, if you every other week, come to the the clarity call to make sure that you're clear on exactly what you need to do on Monday. Which way you weren't there on Monday actually? You missed things. We'll talk about that after. But um, yeah, the clarity call to make sure that you know exactly. Oh, what look at that bird! Doing. That's a nice bird. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's the way because everybody works differently. So if anybody's like scared of being put under pressure, you'll be put under pressure to get the results that you need. However, we do understand everybody works differently. Like one person will work 3000 miles an hour and just get everything done. Others will 
will take three months to just get their marketing sorted. There are different things going on in people's lives, different mindsets and different needs. But um, as we started this, the important thing to remember, guys, is it starts with you. You have to be in the right frame of mind. You have to be in the right place. You have to have that growth mindset there. And then you can start attacking things in your business. Otherwise, it has a knock on effect to um, your personal life. Um, and I'm all about family. I mean, we've, we've both got kids. We've both got wives and stuff. That's the priority. <laughs> it really is. That's what, who we do it for. We do it for our partners, for our kids, for our families and then our community. Um, so we need to be right to serve everybody else. All right. So cool. Daniel, thank you very, very much, man. Really appreciate it. It was a really, really good um, video. And I hope people got a lot of value from it. If you are interested in finding out more about the growth uh, network or what we do, or if you have any questions, want a free 15 minute booster call where we give you one strategy to plug into your business to simplify and, uh, and multiply, as I said, then um, go to boostercall.co.uk and um and give it a go um or just message us on facebook you can message me i'm sure you can message dan as well um or any of the coaches or anything we'll take from there so take care guys and i will speak to you all soon